kingdoms. Say two kingdoms. What are those two kingdoms? The kingdom of God or the kingdom of Satan? Ain't no middle ground. No. You can't be in the Bahamas and America the same time. You're in the Bahamas now. When you leave and take a train, sorry, an airplane or a boat or whatever means, you get to America, you're in America. While you here, you here. So decide where are you? Are you in the kingdom of God? Or are you kingdom of hell? Well, I say, but I got no. You in the kingdom of hell? Well, I don't cuss, I don't smoke, I don't drink. But have you made Jesus Christ your Lord? No. When you in the kingdom of hell? Yes. Oh, I made Jesus Christ my Lord, and I'm living for Him by His blood. You in the kingdom of God? Shall glory. The first thing we must do, preach repentance. Yes. Every church must yes. preach repentance. Yes. Before you can see signs, wonders, and miracles, you got to preach repentance. You got to tell people, get out of sin. Yes. Get out of uh, a, a, a homosexual lifestyle. Get out of sweetheart and adulterous relationship. Get out of fornication. Get out of drinking and smoking. Get out of partying. Get out of lying and teething and cheating. Get out of being in the world. Get out of pornography. Get out of evil thoughts and evil lifestyle. Get out of it. Repent. Turn away from your wicked ways. And I'm ready to change. It take me a while. The devil is alive. One decision. Jesus changed my heart. That's all it takes. That's the first thing. Matthew 4 and 23. Turn your Bible over. And Jesus went about Galilee. Matthew 4 and 23, 25. I have a few scriptures to read today. So hold your Bibles with you. We're going to be reading a bit. You like this? Say glory. Glory. All right. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the what? Kingdom. Uh-huh. See there? That's why we're in the kingdom apostolic ministries of people of God. Amen. Amen. Listen to him. We follow him and he takes care of us. That's the message of the kingdom. Amen. Receive it through the, what he did on the cross and through the blood of Jesus and through his resurrection when he rose from the dead. For our sins, and he is seated in heaven in all power, and he's coming back again very soon. That is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yes. You don't have to be deep to get it. That's all it is, people. God. Amen, young brothers. Amen. That's all it is. You don't need to know all of this Bible yet. Read it. One day you'll learn more and more. But the basic thing you need to know is that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, amen, went to the grave, rose again. He's given power over the enemy. You don't have to sin anymore. You don't have to be in defeat anymore. You don't have to be destroyed anymore. You don't have to be oppressed anymore. You can be free and you can live this life and the life that he's called you to live in. Doesn't matter where you start from. With God's miracle power, He could take you from anywhere to the top. Yes. You see me here today? I'm going to share with you, young man. My mother had me as a young mother. Glory. Glory. And all manner of disease among the people. Is there anything too hard for our God to heal? Touch it with an axe. Is there anything too hard? Uh-huh. Matthew 5 and 24. Read. Everybody who has the Bible, all you young people, all you people of God, just read. Matthew, that same chapter. Keep your Bibles open. Matthew 4 and 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought at him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases torment. How many you know when you have diseases is a torment too? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you when medicine is a doctor, we break down diseases. There are uh, uh, diseases of the body and diseases of the mind. Hallelujah. Ah, the diseases of the mind. Torment, oppression, depression, mental illness. There are diseases of the body from the head to the toe. Neurological, cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, skin disorders, uh, uh, reproductive disorders, muscle, bones, and joint disorders. Every disease and illness, Jesus is the healer for it. Amen. And those which were possessed with devils. So that's the mental. There's three things that Jesus heals. Amen? Jesus heals the mental. Say the mental. The mental. 
The mental is the soul. Jesus heals the body. Say the body. body. Everyone shot the body. body. That's the physical part. And Jesus heals the spirit. Say the spirit. spirit. That's where demons want to live. We have body, mind, and spirit. So if we have body, mind, and spirit, Jesus who created us has a healing for every part of those things. So if you have a mental illness, Jesus can heal your mind, regulate your soul, take away depression and oppression and fear and doubt and psychosis. If you have a physical ailment from the head to the toe, Jesus can heal it. And prayed. My cousin Mandira, who's a lawyer now, was there. We prayed the power of God fell. Oh God, in the classroom, break time, we went out. In the class, it continued. It was like a tingling. And the glory and the cloud of God was over us. We went and took it into the music room at Prince William High School. Their revival broke out. People were getting saved. The power of God was falling. It came upon them at lunchtime. We went next class. I went to the next class. Holy Ghost said, continue. I began in Prince William. Hallelujah. Oh God. And I began to pray. This was like 2000. And in the classroom, oh God, people were being slain in the classroom. The Holy Ghost told me, the only thing I can remember, the Lord reminded me, but many him. Hallelujah. I call the young person up. I lay hands on them and the Lord said, blow on them. When I blow, they begin to stumble back under the power and the glory of God. It was so powerful. I shared with Kevin Johnson. He's a bishop in Tennessee now. His brother is Kendall Johnson. And he began to see and they began to record. The testimony, the born is one. Hallelujah. It was so powerful. I went to my family. I began to tell them about the power of God that happened. My grandmother and family. I went to Bishop Ross and I shared it in the church that Sunday of how the power of God moved with shines when there's a miracle. Shout glory. 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 No one glory. can tell me about no miracle. I have seen the supernatural outpouring of the glory of God in tangible ways. Yeah. While in, in that same school, huh, that year before, a young lady huh, was demon possessed. Huh. Oh God. Huh. And they cut and they took in the room. Huh. I had just come out of assembly. All I heard was this ruckus. Huh. The Holy Ghost had me passing by. Yeah. So I thought. The guidance council room. Huh. And this young girl was huh, manifesting with all these symbols. And they had took four or five to hold her down. And she began to talk in this unknown voice. Huh, speaking huh, like a man. And this was a 13 year old girl and all them were praying praying and then they called for apostle Rodney Roberts that's how I met him he came there and he began to be do deliverance and I was right there as a young Christian and as a teacher at the school watching deliverance and he called that spirit up and they said what's your name and they called him my name is and they said the name and he said how did you get here and he began to talk to the demon spirit and this young girl in the school me and a few others were in the room Madeira, my cousin, that was her close friend. So she could validate this for you. And Apostle Ronnie began to cast that demon out. And they said, now call, because it was school, they said, call an ambulance and take her to the hospital. And as he was walking out, Apostle Ronnie, I ran behind him and I said, oh, what, what happened there? What is this? And he began to tell me about deliverance. He said, and he began to prophesy, he said, something about you, we got to connect. And I said, yeah, I can connect with you, give me a number, where to find you. That is how I met him. I met him in 2000 in a deliverance session that, thank God, how many of God is assigned one and miracle? If I didn't walk past that room, the Holy Ghost had me walk past the room right when he came in to go in that room to see what was happening. And he came with another pastor who was there, who was the, uh, the nurse of the school, uh, Clara Thompson. I think she died and went to be with the Lord last year. Jeffrey Wood, Reverend Wood in Nassau, is still alive. And Bishop, that is how I met him. And my eyes to the word of God became so real. Everywhere the Bible said Jesus cast out devils. I have no doubt about believing in Amen. devils. Amen. And guess what God did? Connected me with him. I went a couple times under the tent where he was in the grove. And he prophesied ministry to me. And I kept his thumb on him. And I went off to school, the medical school in Trinidad. I called and emailed him from time to time. And when I was coming back, the Lord said, tell him you're coming to join him. It took me a few months. And from then to now, then he became my pastor. I went to the church. Then I went into the deliverance ministry sessions in five watches. I saw demons getting cast out of people. 
And I said, this Jesus is real. This Bible is real. Not a word of it is a lie. Every single thing in this Bible is real. Not only back then when Jesus lived, but I saw it in my own two eyes. It's a medical doctor. And it doesn't contradict with the word of God. I saw stuff. And we begin to be, I began to be on the deliverance team. And I began to see supernatural miracle people delivered. Demons coming out. People being healed. Mind regulated. Transformed. Changed. And I began to be introduced to the supernatural. Amen. And I was on the delivery. And the God sent me in. We come into a cool soul. Just stick with me. And then I came here. And the Lord sent me to keep preaching, teaching. And the woman of God, you remember, we got Mark Knowles here one year. Bishop Mark Knowles. And he began to do deliverance and show us deliverance right here. And it was packed. We saw the pictures. The young lady manifest. He began to do deliverance and teach us on the power of God and the power of deliverance. We got tapes of this and that. We began to I get hungry for deliverance. And I, when I went to Nassau on a trip, told the deliverance leader who at the time was past the van, I said, bring the deliverance team. And Bishop released them to bring the deliverance team. You remember that element? Yeah. And we spent three, four days. He taught us deliverance. Yeah. We went through deliverance. He taught us deliverance. And we left the power. God fell on us for deliverance. <coughs> Woman of God, remember, we started moving in the power of deliverance. So people were getting delivered. They would come to those doors. And demons would come out. Yeah. We sat there with session, and when we first started, it took a while. After a while, we called them spirit up. Uh, hallelujah. Night after night, uh, week after week, uh, people were being delivered. Some of the people I saw around, hallelujah, uh, uh, some who were going here, they ain't here today. Delivered! All kind of folk. This one bring a whole family. That one brought the whole family. That one bring their child, their son, their daughter. Hallelujah. Now they're here. Uh, the deliverance was taking place on the regular. Do you see the power of demons to speak and they would say angels are all around you we would tell the angels of the lord i wish we had it recorded she'll tell you it was a little fairy tale we'd tell the angels of the lord pin the person down and without nobody holding them they'll get them and they'll pin them right down i never saw the angels physically with my eye but when the lord tells us to tell the angel to pin them down to pin them down. next time we tell the angel of the lord uh, um, whip them with the sword of the lord and they would whip the person, the person on the other side and just shake and tickle under the power of God as the angels were whipping the demons in them. We began to move in the power of God. We began to see the power of Jesus. We began to call on the, the spiritual realm and to walk in the spiritual realm and move in the spiritual realm with power. And people were being set free and angels were manifesting and they were seeing. Most thing that got me most excited is when we asked them, the demon, who is in here, they would say, Jesus is here. They say, Jesus. Jesus was here every single time during those deliverance. Listen here, if God doesn't do another thing for me in this life, what I have seen and what I've experienced through the power of God. Ain't a man, woman, boy, a girl could tell me otherwise but Jesus Christ and his power. A man who come and go. If one person, if I'm the only one coming here, I will come here in a miracle power that I've those signs and the wonders and the miracles I've seen in my few years and in the years in here with the power of God only here everywhere. We've gone places before and people were delivered and, 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 and were set free and healed. And the prophetic word, I saw God allow us to speak to people stuff who we didn't even know, prophesy stuff to them, not know how to look out, what's going on in their body, how they were sick, what, what's happening in their family, what's happening in their life. I had people who were prophets come here, spoke stuff in my life. The power of yes. prophecy, the prophetic word, you've experienced it, those who've been here, spoke to your life, spoke to your destiny, yes. spoke to your thought. Those are supernatural things. Uh, these are people who didn't have no record and nothing known about your life. And they spoke things about your life. No one even knew. We take the supernatural for granted. We become too common with the supernatural. Yes. But we are a supernatural house of glory. 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 We are a supernatural glory. miracle house. Oh, God, I worship oh, Jesus. Right. Jesus. Mm. You get hit with the
with a pen in the middle of the night. Oh God, you ain't over here. You better know how to worship. Lord, I worship. Lord Jesus, I praise you with all my heart. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I want some immediate miracles. I want some immediate miracles. I don't know about you. I, 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 I'm a greedy, huh, spiritual person. Huh. I don't want no miracle next year. Huh. Don't tell me I'm going to be blessed next year. Huh. Don't tell me I'm going to be healed two years from now. Huh. Don't tell me I'm going to get a little something, something, huh, a little breakthrough down the road. Huh. Give me my stuff now. Yes. Immediate elder. I want an immediate blessing. Amen. Jesus ain't intimidated by your immediate requests. You think, oh, he got to do this and then go, I'm going to do that. No, I want my stuff now. now. That's my miracle is being now. Yeah. I don't want it for tomorrow. Bless me now. Enlarge my territory now. Man, open my door now. I have a family I need a supply. Lord, give me an apartment now. You scared ass of it. Come on, Ella. We scared ass. Lord, I need a bus now to pick all these children up and take them home. We need a car now. We need a house now. We need a miracle now. We need some jobs now. We need some money now. We need some grocery now. Yes. You can oh, pass it. Yeah, I know it. If God desire, even if He desire, He desire. Yes. Above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health, even if you're so proper. God desire you to get your miracle now, not later. Now, miracle. Because that's how miracles work. In order for a miracle to happen, you've got to put pressure on God to do it now. Oh, Jesus. In order for your miracle, God, the people of God, huh? yeah, carry your own down over there. Huh? Ah, you can come to the church all you want. Huh? I believe in the house of God. Huh? I believe in Jesus. Huh? I believe in His power. Huh? I know of His miracles. Huh? Be it unto you and to me according to our faith. Huh? Shout glory! Jesus left them there. Huh? Jesus left them there. And in verse fourteen of Matthew eight, I'm bringing this to a close. I'll pick it up next week. I haven't even got half, but you better be here this month. We're talking about miracle signs and wonders of the apostolic church. When Jesus, verse 14, came into Peter's house, he just healed the leper. He healed the torment. He healed the soldier's servant. In the same chapter, he goes to Peter's house. He saw Peter's wife's mother, his mother-in-law, and the sealer of the sickness. My God. Jesus is merciful. I can tell Peter was a loving man. Because <laughs> some mother in law, you yeah, were praying for. Huh? But here it is, Peter. <laughs> Come on, shout glory. <laughs> but Peter <laughs> took Jesus to his mother in law house. <laughs> and maybe he had a good relationship <laughs> with his mother in law. And she had a fever. <laughs> and because of that, <laughs> and he touched her hand. <laughs> and the fever left her. Jesus didn't lay hand and oil off. He just touched her. Hope oh, healed. And she arose and ministered unto him. He touched her and she was healed what? Immediately. Touch your neighbor say immediate miracles. Immediately. I don't know where we get this stuff from that miracles have to take forever. Instantly. God has power over the natural and the supernatural. He can do stuff today. You can say, God, give me a job and tomorrow, right now, get it. You only had a catch her, catch her, catch her. See now, take it out of the Bible and put it in your life. God, I smoke dope. You can take it from me instantly. I know people who got touched and the, 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 the desire for nicotine left them out instantly. The desire for cocaine left them out instantly. The, the, the desire for bear and liquor, they got completely delivered instantly and never touched it again in their life. Uh, oh God, uh, hallelujah. I was lost and bound in every form of sin. Immediately, Jesus took it from them. When the evening was come, <clears throat> they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word. He and they had something to get out. They came out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Come on, devils. Out. Go. Leave this life who's watching. Leave this life who's listening. Leave this life who's here. Come out in the name of Jesus who cast out devils by his word. Come out. 
and heal all that were sick. He didn't leave one sick. Oh, you got cancer, I got. Yeah. You got chicken, chicken pox, I can heal you. You have sore throat, I can heal you. You have acne, I can leave you today. That's puberty. The devil is a liar. Everyone that was sick, he healed all, everyone. He didn't leave one sick. Now, the Bible said it didn't say how much it was. If they brought 10,000 people who were sick, in the evening they brought multitude, he healed every last one of them. That I means he stayed there until everyone was healed. That it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Hazel the prophet. Watch what it says. Saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. This is before he went to the cross. So if he was healing them before he went to the cross, where he had to take on sickness and disease on the cross, imagine now that after he's gone all our sickness, he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, so that after he died on the cross, rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, we all should be healed. Hallelujah. He was healing before he went to the cross. So the healing should be even greater. Every church should be healing. People should be healed in the church. People should be delivered in the church. This is 2,000 years since Jesus left. Everyone that comes should be healed. There should be no sick among you. Now when Jesus saw the